Welcome to the final week of the BTFL2 regular season. These games don't matter as much. Baltimore will travel to Detroit. This is a repeat from week one. Every game this week is a rematch from week one. Otis Anderson comes back from injury. But we'll start off with Rod Bernstein, who gets the touchdown on the first drive. He had a great game last week, found himself on the thumbnail. Rich Gannon, who's taking over for Eric Kramer, would throw it down the right side to Irving Fryer. And then Rich Gannon, the cannon, would find Mark Ingram, left corner of the end zone. Touchdown, the game is tied. Rich Gannon, the cannon, gets the ball back for the Bulls. Pressure in his face, he deliver an interception to Tim O'McDonald, had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and Cody Carlson would find Ron Hall on this farm, and he gets into the end zone, it is 14-7, 17-10 now, he didn't have to show those field goal drives, not as important, but I'll tell you what's important, Anthony Carter catching the ball down the left side, and then Rod Bernstein rumbling into the end zone. 24 to 10 in favor of the Mustangs. Rich Gannon would step up. He needs more points. He wants to make things more respectable. Possibly win this game. Pass to Irving Fryer. Struggling to tackle him. Inside the red zone. No pressure in his face. Irving Fryer has the touchdown. Baltimore needs to recover this onside kick. And they do not. Detroit wins 24 to 17. They sweep Baltimore. Baltimore is 6-10, Mustangs are 7-9. The New York Empire won this week one contest against the Pittsburgh Renegades. Tricky Ricky Irvins would come back from injury, and over the middle on the first drive would be Michael Hee <laughs> Hee Jackson on this pass from John Elway. He doesn't moonwalk into the end zone, but John Elway would step up, find Don Beebe. He's got the touchdown. They find themselves in the red zone again on their third drive as Elway would find Don Beebe again, it's 14 to nothing. New York trying to find its way onto the board. Steve DeBerg throws it down the left side, corner of the end zone, wide open, Mike Sherrard. Now it's 14 to seven. John Elway hasn't gotten much offense this year, especially as of late. He'll find Kevin Mack attack to take a 14 point lead. DeBerg, play action rolls out, bootlegs, Steps up into the pocket, finds Flipper Anderson. He dives at the 21-yard line, and he could go all the way into the end zone. 21-14 to 14 is the score. Elway hands it off to Reggie Cobb. He would put the ball on the ground. It's a fumble recovered by the Empire, and Norwood would make a field goal. It's good. 21-17. DeBerg inside his own territory. Pressure in his face. He finds Tricky Ricky Irvins. Coming back from his injury, he dives and makes it to around the 18-yard line. And then the Berg with play action rollout bootlegs. Got a bunch of open targets. Finds the toughest one, Flipper Anderson, and New York takes the lead. However, it's short-lived because Michael Hee <laughs> Jackson Moon walks into the end zone for Pittsburgh. And New York finds themselves in a place they don't want to be. DeBerg is sacked by Eugene Lockhart, and it's a safety. 30 to 24, and DeBerg needs to bring his team back. However, he's intercepted by Todd Scott here, and this would set up Pittsburgh nicely as John Elway would say, I'm gonna do this myself and run it into the end zone, take a 13 point lead on that touchdown. So New York, they gotta come back, down 13 points. DeBerg, he knows he can do it. Play action rollout bootleg to Mike Sherrard, getting it inside the 20 yard line and then would hand it off to Dexter Carter. Dexter Carter bobs and weaves around defenders for the go-ahead touchdown. Scott Norwood's gotta make this extra point to take the lead. It's good, 38-37's the score. Pittsburgh is five and 11, Empire's four and 12. They end with the win. These two teams are playing for pride, Vegas and the Scorpions. We'll start off with Mike Rozier of the Gamblers getting the ball up the middle. He switches to the left side. Tight ropes the sideline. The Gamblers take an early lead. Scorpions kick a field goal, but we don't need to show that because this game is really not as important. Throw down the right side from Chris Miller to Drew over the hill. They make it an 11 point ball game. Steve Bono on his next drive, he goes da 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 da. I got you, Kerry Cash, as Kerry Cash 
dives to make the catch, and Steve Bono says, do, 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 da, da. I got you, Mark Jackson. 14 to 10. Bono with another drive. He's back. Nobody's in his face. He says, I got you, Tim Brown. And Tim Brown could go all the way. The Hall of Famers got the touchdown. Now the Scorpions have the 17-14 lead. Chris Miller would throw down the left side deep to Ricky Sanders. And this would lead to a field goal tie game. The Gamblers would get the ball back. Chris Miller would throw it again to Sanders. He jumps to make the catch, and he's tackled at around the 20-yard line. Cleveland Gary would get the handoff, and he would rumble, bumble, stumble for the lead. 24-17, Scorpions get the ball back. Steve Bono says, do 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 I got you, Albert Bentley, and Albert Bentley is in the end zone. It's a tie ball game. Now, here's where things get funny. Handoff, balls fumbled, recovered by Dwayne Harper. And then with their next play, Steve Bono, pressure in his face. He'd throw an interception to Isaac Holt. And then Isaac Holt would get tackled. It's a fumble. Ball's recovered by the Gamblers. So they get an, a last chance, 4th and 14. They're deciding to go for it. I guess why not? This game doesn't really matter. The ball is caught by Rogier, but it's a turnover. So Morton Anderson would try a field goal to win, but it's no good. It is overtime. Usually they say if you get the ball first, you win. And guess what? The Scorpions get the ball first, and they're in prime field goal range, setting up this field goal for Morton Anderson. The ball is spotted. The kick is up, and it is good! 27-24, Morton Anderson. Scorpions win. Both teams are ending this season 6-10. and To round off the meaningless game slot, Miami and the Denver Buffaloes, Miami's got nothing to play for, so Jim Everett would be replaced by former first-round pick Jeff George, as well as a couple of other guys, so that they could rest their starters for the playoffs. But we'll start off with Denver Buffaloes. Christian Okoye, he would run up the middle violently, but he would fumble. Balls recovered by Brian Washington of the Miami Riptide, and this would lead to Jeff George... Pressure in his face, he'd throw the check down to Todd McNair. It's a 7-0 ball game. This would be a tough game for the Denver Buffaloes, and especially Christian Okoye, as Jeff George would throw the ball down the right side to Bailey. This would lead to a field goal by John Casey, 10-0. Later in the game, 4th and 10, a bear. He steps up into the pocket and is sacked by Pierce Holt. Sides retired. 13 to nothing. Jeff George throws a touchdown to Hobie Brenner. What a name. 20 to nothing to end the game. Christian Okoye gets the handoff down the right side. He would get tackled and he would fumble. So that's a horrible play for Okoye. Miami would win 27 to nothing. Miami is 10 and 6. Denver is 6 and 10.